Limitless Nation, you are a generational curse breaker of your family. You will be the first millionaire of your family. You will be the first billionaire of your family. The Bible says the wealth of the wicked is stored up for his children. That is you. Limitless Nation, we are moving from the pit to the palace. We are not settling for the front porch blessings. We are moving higher. We are going higher. We are reaching new destinies. We are becoming the first ones in our families to own properties. We're the first ones in our families to be blessed. Come on, Limitless, let's give the Lord a round of praise in this place how many of you enjoyed that worship experience let's give our worship leaders a round of applause what an amazing worship experience it was i'm super excited to have another opportunity to share the word of the lord with you all today and uh to kick off this new financial series entitled rags to riches rags to riches and the beauty of this new series, ladies and gentlemen, is that Bishop Kim, uh, she has a clear objective to not only educate you on biblical finances, but to make sure that you have all the tools that you need to build a solid foundation so that you can begin your own personal financial process uh, of going from rags to riches. And so today I'm going to take a few minutes to talk to you about supernatural sowing for abundant living. Supernatural sowing for abundant living. So make sure you have your pen, your notepads, or whatever the devices are that you're using because I'm going to give you not only a clear working definition for what supernatural sowing is, I'm going to give you a clear description of how it works and then I'm going to share with you three things that I believe supernatural sowing requires and so I'll give you these three things and we'll come back and we'll get into the details of what it is how it works so that you can implement it and execute it in your life how does that sound supernatural sowing for abundant living supernatural sowing for abundant living now it's very important for me to establish a, a, a critical point for all of you, very critical point for all of you, and it is this. It is absolutely impossible for you to experience a greater level of reaping financially if you do not master the biblical practice of supernatural sowing. All right. All right. Can we establish that fact today? It is absolutely impossible, impossible for you to experience a greater level of reaping financially if, in fact, you do not master the biblical practice of supernatural sowing. And so I can guarantee you that b b before this service ends, if you grasp the revelation of supernatural sowing, and if you allow yourself to be open to the endless possibilities of what it will and has the potential to produce in your life, you will see supernatural results financially. Can you believe that? Can you grasp that? Are you ready for that? All right. Supernatural sowing for abundant living. I want to give you these three things supernatural sowing requires. If you're taking notes, I want you to write them down. Number one, the first thing supernatural sowing requires is treasure. It requires treasure. Number two, the second thing supernatural sowing requires is timing. Timing. And number three, the third thing supernatural sowing requires is trust. Trust. These are the three things that supernatural sowing requires. Treasure, timing, and trust. I want to make sure that you've taken good notes and you have it, so I want you to repeat back to me. Number one, supernatural sowing requires what? Treasure. Number two, supernatural sowing requires what? Timing. Number three, supernatural sowing requires what? Trust. Requires treasure, requires timing, and it requires trust. So all of my good note takers, 
I'm, I want you to go for this ride with me. What exactly is supernatural sowing? Supernatural sowing, ladies and gentlemen, describes a lifestyle of obedience to specific financial God objectives. A lifestyle of obedience to specific financial God objectives. As a matter of fact, in Deuteronomy 8 and 18, Prophet Moses makes it clear to us as people of God that not only should we remember God, but he explains to us why we should remember God. Because it is God that gives you and I this power, this capacity, this capability to get wealth, to get the bag, to become financially stable. And he gives us his objective so that he can establish his covenant, his covenant on the earth. So God already has an objective. God knows exactly what he intends to do for you. But he also understands that in order for him to execute and to fulfill that objective, he needs to give you something to work with. I'm trying to stay bougie as long as I possibly can, but you know that hood coming around the corner. God trying to give you something to work with. And he uses supernatural sowing to establish a lifestyle of obedience so that he can show you what his objective is for your life. Supernatural sowing is also a response to revelation that sets expectation for for a certain manifestation. I want you to hear that. So supernatural sowing is not just a lifestyle of obedience based on God's objectives, but it is a response to revelation that sets expectation for a certain manifestation. So I don't get manifestation unless an expectation has been set for the manifestation. Are you with me? The way the expectation is set is by supernaturally sowing in response to what God has spoken over your life. So when God says, I'm going to give you houses you didn't build. I'm going to give you vineyards you didn't plant. I'm going to turn that thing around for you. When you hear these revelatory words, your response is by sowing into what God said So an expectation can be set by you and a manifestation can be executed by God. In other words, God is looking for people who use this tool of supernatural sowing to get in such partnership with him that he just starts acting a fool in your life. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, "For, for without faith, Without some corresponding action for my hood figures. If if, if you can't if you can't prove what that faith do, if you ain't got nothing to show that you really believe in God on another level, he says it's impossible to please me. He says, but first you must believe that he is. And you have to believe that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So if I believe that God exists and if I believe that God is a rewarder and that establishes that he does have a reward, I need to figure out how do I seek God so I can get the reward he has for me. So God says, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you this thing called supernatural sowing so that you can establish a lifestyle of obedience. You can provoke my financial objectives in your life. And so that you can set the expectation for yourself based on what you want to see show up for you. Not only is supernatural sowing a lifestyle of obedience and a response to revelation, but if you're taking notes, supernatural sowing is also, gets good here, a ministry of grace. So for those of you that's trying to figure out, Lord, what you called me to do, I need to know where my ministry at. Where my gift is, everyone has the God-given capacity to participate in this supernatural sowing, which in essence is a ministry of grace. It is a ministry of grace, which becomes the freeway to favor. 
So, so, so my tithing is an obligation. My giving is my reasonable service. But my supernatural sowing puts me in this unique position, don't miss this, to, to give not under pressure, but to give under promise. So I'm not giving because I'm obligated. I'm giving because I have obliged to what God's intention is for my life. And every one of you today, you have a revelation that God has given to you, whether directly or indirectly, that he intends for you to respond to. And if you do not see a manifestation specifically in the area of your finances, all you have to do is make the critical decision to give God a response to what he already told you he want to do for you. And that response, ladies and gentlemen, is what triggers this ministry of grace, which becomes the freeway to favor. Supernatural sowing is also an expression this is where the rubber meets the road for, for at least 20 of you. Supernatural sowing is an expression of professional giving that sets you up for abundant living. So, so, so God says, I, I want you to step your game up. I don't want you to be new to this. I want you to be true to this. I just lost by 10 bougie believers right there. I want to show you how to move in a different way so you can see things you've never saw. Here's, here's what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7. Paul says, now as you abound and excel. In other words, since you are already professionals, you are already living abundantly, you are already excelling, you pros at faith. You pros at praise and worship. Y'all do the doggone thing when it comes to fasting and praying and shouting. He says, since you excel and you are at the forefront in everything, in faith, in expressing yourself, in knowledge, in zeal, in your love for others, notice what he says. He says, see to it that you also come to the forefront or become professionals and abound and excel in this grace work of giving. So God says it's not enough for you to shout like you're rich, but live like you're broke. And I can't hear nobody right there. You, 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 I'm, 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 I'm finna find about five of y'all. This year, God's gonna see to it. This is a prophecy. That your bank account matches your tongues. You can't handle that. Let me come over here. I, I said this year. If you pull on the Holy Ghost, it could be this month. He's going to see to it that your credit score matches your praise. So if you are anticipating anything from God in the area of finances... God says, I want to put you on a professional level of sowing because what you are about to reap, who am I talking to? Look at somebody and tell me, he's talking about me right here. What you are about to reap, your eyes have never seen this type of reaping. Your ears have never heard this level of return. It has never even entered into your heart what's about to take place in your life. I'm only talking to supernatural sowers. If you are stingy, this is not for you. But if you are ready to see God show up and show out in every area of your life, news flash, help is not on the way. Help has already showed up. In Repeat after me. I am a supernatural sower. And I reap supernatural results. I need you to say it with a little more swag. I am a supernatural sower. And I reap supernatural results. 
Now listen to this. As a supernatural sower, when God places something in your heart, he pairs it with provision for your life. But he provokes it through supernatural sowing from your hand. When God places something in your heart, the idea, the business, the ministry, the career shift, the new position, the car, the house, the experience, the quality of life. When God puts that thing in your heart, he already pairs it with provision for your life. Everything, so you can understand it, that God has placed in your heart that you want to do, there is already provision for you to get it done. Because when he places it in your heart, he pairs it with provision for your life, but he provokes it through supernatural sowing from your hand. So you have to become the conduit through which what God has already prepared in provision to show up for you. Your sowing triggers a supernatural result from heaven that under any other circumstance you would never see. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 8, here's what Paul says. Remember this, y'all. He who sows, notice the terminology that he's using. So, so, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows, terminology, generously will also reap generously. He says, let each one of you give as he has made up in his mind what has been said in their heart. And, 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 and not reluctantly, sorrowfully, or under compulsion. He says, because God, he is crazy about God loves. God, do you see that? Takes pleasure in. He prizes above other things. God is unwilling to abandon or do without somebody who has become a professional in their giving. And not only that, but God is able to make all grace, all favor, all earthly blessing. Do you hear what I'm reading? What's coming to you is not a portion. What's coming to you is not a fraction. What's coming to you is all that God has promised you. I don't know who I came to push into prosperity today, but God says you are leaving this sanctuary not expecting some or a portion. You are leaving this sanctuary with the anticipation to receive it all look at somebody and tell them I'm getting it all if you only knew what I went through in my life just to get to this point I've been through bankruptcy I've been through four who am I prophesying about I've lost some stuff I've had to downsize and now after all of this that I've been through God is using a prophet to let me know the wait is over he ain't giving me some he ain't giving me a fraction he ain't giving me a portion he's giving me all and you can't give God a you better put a I, you better put a praise right there you better let the enemy know I did not come here to play devil I did not lose friends behind this to chuck and jive with you. I did not give up a big house and downsize for a season to miss what God's got for me. Is there anybody here that want it all? Well, you better open up your mouth and give God a shout like he's talking to you. Right there. And God is able to make all grace, all earthly favor come to you in abundance. So that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient position enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you are leaving this place 100% self-sufficient. I feel the Holy Ghost right there. I, 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 feel God, I, feel God, I feel God moving on somebody 
who, whose credit is really toe up because God says, I just have a point to prove. That is not by might how you're going to get this new house. It's, it's not by power how I'm going to fund that vision. It's, it's by my spirit that I, ex who am I prophesying? I, it's by my spirit. You've been trying to figure out how I can save enough money to get this thing done. How can I work on my credit to get to the next level? God says in this season, boo, we're going to skip all those protocols. I'm getting ready to make you skip places in the line. I'm bringing you from the backdrop to the forefront. You ain't going to have to wait another 36 months. I am accelerating that thing and I need your praise to match my promise. Here are the three things that supernatural sowing requires. Number one, supernatural sowing requires treasure. It's where it gets good for you. It requires treasure. It requires treasure. It requires something to work with. Come on, y'all. God, like, if we're going to do the doggone thing, sh show me what you're working with, boo. Like, if, if, if I'm bringing all, you, you got to bring something now. So he says it requires treasure. Notice this. A treasure is a natural resource. Like that moolah, baby. There's about five hood figures over there. Forgot all about church. I say treasure is a natural resource. Like that moolah, baby. That you can use to put that faith to work. God say, I got to put something in your hand so you can show you, me, and the world what that faith do. Because God say, I ain't really moving for people who just talking, but who ain't really acting. But, but for my sowers who are about it, about it I'm going to put some stuff in their hands because they know what to do with it. And when they start doing what they do with what's in their hands, I'm going to just show up in all areas of their life. A treasure is a natural resource like money that you can use to put your faith to work. Listen to this. Treasure or money, it works as connective tissue that ties your heart to your acts of obedience. So when I supernaturally sow, God is using that as a way to create a connective tissue to tie my heart to my act of obedience. This is one of the reasons why the Bible says where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Because if you've ever done something, especially financially, on a substantial level, if it don't do nothing else for you, it triggers you to start thinking. Have, have you ever give so much? That on the way home, you start sweating, letting the windows down. And hoping you just didn't get finessed. <laughs> am, I, am I the only one? Talking to yourself all the way home. Now, Lord, I'm from the hood. I got game. I done lost it. They done talked me out of it. <laughs> Be because it becomes a connective tissue that, that, that really ties your heart to your act of obedience. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10, notice what it says. And God, who provides seed for the stingy, the only person in the Bible that God says he's giving seed to is a sower. So Paul says, and God, who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating will also provide and multiply your resources. Another word for resources is money. Another word for money is treasure. So God like, listen, when we come into a partnership, I got you, boo. Bruh, we on the same page. 
I put things in your hand for what I want to do in your life, not to fix your life. You ain't got enough now to fix your life. But you got enough now for God to work with so he can fix your life. So he provides seed for the sower. Here's my last point. Here's my last point. If you take a note, I want you to write this down. Money doesn't determine your faith. I know broke people who believe and ballers who scared. Because money does not determine your faith. It just reinforces your faith by becoming proof that God gave you a promise. God, I need somebody to sit right there. I know I'm working you today, but look at somebody and tell them he gave me a promise. Now, that's the wrong person. They ain't paying attention. They taking notes. Look at somebody else. He gave, he gave me a promise. No, for real, for real. I, I didn't just come here just to have church. I didn't just come here because it's the right thing to do. I came here because there's a promise hovering over my head. And any moment now, I'm just testifying for you. Any moment now, this thing that's over my head is going to start showing up in my life. I did not cry. I did not I did not wail and weep and moan. I did not go through seasons of depression to see nothing show up. So money doesn't determine your faith. It just reinforces your faith by becoming proof that God gave you a promise. Imagine if how I gave was a representation of the level of promise I had. Imagine if how I sow, it was a reinforcement of what God said. Imagine if you believe all the things you've heard in those prophetic lines. <laughs> Imagine everything that God showed you in a dream, gave you in a vision, spoke to you through prophets and pastors and preachers and ministers and revealed to you along the course of your life while you were going through these things that were seemingly destroying you and debilitating you. Imagine if how you respond as a professional giver reflects the level of return that is owed to you. Supernatural sowing requires treasure. Number two, supernatural sowing requires timing. Very important. It requires timing. In the New Testament, the Greek word kairos is used for timing, which describes the divine moment when God acts on your behalf. Isn't it good to know if you participate with treasure, God ties it to timing? And he, in his eternal sovereignty, waits for the point in your process to show up and show out. Like, do you do you do you feel me on this? I, I want I want I want somebody to catch this. Your problems are on a timer. <laughs> that thing that got you stressed out, because you supposed to pay it by the first. They gave you to the fifth. They told you they gonna submit paperwork by the eleventh. You at the courthouse by the 21st, ask me how I know. But what you don't understand, the paperwork is in a process based on a timer. Everything that you are facing in your life that's tied to your money is on a timer. And when you hit the moment that God decides to act on your behalf... It will be obliterated right before your eyes. Man, some of y'all taking the long way home. But for those of you that got rabbit feet, you better catch this revelation. 
You are not going into the month of March dragging bills from February and January and last June into your, and this ain't even about your income tax return. That's just extra boo. God says what I'm going to do for you ain't even going to be needed because you're going to see something somebody tell them it's about to show up it's about to show up you better thank God right now don't you wait until it shows up to learn how to give God praise don't you wait until you get to the bank tomorrow to realize it was deposited over the weekend don't you wait until you show up to the interview to find out they gave you a better job than the one you applied for don't you wait until they call you back and say you approved and you're qualified. You're already approved. You're already qualified. So while other people are waiting for something to happen, I'm going to go give God some praise. I thought y'all was ready to have some church today. Listen to this. gives God an opportunity to properly prepare you to A, handle the results and B, position you to reap the results from the treasure that you sowed. See, you tripping because you in the middle of timing and you like, but hold up, God. This ain't working. No, the reason why you don't see it is because it is working. Because, because if God would have gave it to you at point A, watch this, it wouldn't have been enough zeros on the check. You just missed it. If, if God would have gave it to you at point C, you would have settled for a townhouse when he had a mansion. God, who am I talking? If God would have opened the door for you at EFG, you would have dummied yourself down for $25 an hour when he's got a multi-million dollar business for you. God, who am I talking to in this place? God says you are in the middle of a process and when I bring you out of this process, you will be prepared to handle it and positioned to receive it. The Bible says as long as the earth remains, there will be seed, time, harvest. So there's a seed phase, a time phase, and a harvest phase. Right? Luke 8 and 11 says the seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. So there's this corresponding participation that God creates when you sow seed that turns into word. The seed is the word of God. So when I sow a seed, I'm actually sowing word. <laughs> you just missed it. Let me say it again. Back that thing up, Ralph. Say Luke 8 and 11, he says, the seed is the word of God. So when I sow seed, God converts it into word. This, this is just a practical principle for all of you to catch before I go to my last point. When you put a dollar in the offering, they take it to the bank. They give it to the bank. The bank deposits it. They are not depositing a seed, they're depositing a dollar. Just in case you thought it was something else. <laughs> Your dollar in the envelope is a dollar at truest. They, 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 the, 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 the treasurers are not going to the bank on Monday taking seed. They would be arrested. I'm talking about this seed from, from the church. What do you mean seed? You either going to jail or going to get Baker Act. But I want you to catch this. What converts it into seed? The supernatural process. 
but I had something to work with to trigger that God, if there is a supernatural reward that you have for me, I will take this tangible resource. It's not going to change in the natural because wherever it ends up, it's still going to be what it was when I let it go. But because you are sovereign over my life, you turn what was a dollar into the, in the natural into a multi-million dollar business in the supernatural. Isaiah 55, he says, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It will accomplish. So, so, so here's what God does. God says, I'll take your treasure. I'll tie your treasure to my timing. And then I will convert treasure and timing into the third requirement, which is a trust. Ladies and gentlemen, a trust is not a sole proprietorship. A, a, a sole proprietor or a LLC. A trust is not an S corp or a C corp. A trust is not a fictitious entity. A trust is not a DBA. This is why trust is re- required. But you don't get trust unless you give treasure and he ties it with timing. Are you understanding me? So God takes my treasure, connects it and ties it to his timing, and he creates a trust. Very important. So what exactly is a trust? The biblical Greek word for trust carries with it the idea of a stockpile, a stove. There ain't no store. A stove. You know you don't say store unless you're at an interview. <laughs> store. I'm going there talking about no store. <laughs> you're going to get that look and a call back. <laughs> Unfortunately, Jacob, <laughs> we're overhired. I'm going to talk about store. The biblical Greek word for trust carries with it the idea of a stockpile, stow, deposit, and credit. Why is this important? Because trust biblically has an economic undertone. This is so important because we always say, Lord, I trust you. And God like, yeah, on your version of trust. Because if you say you trust me with your mouth, but you showing signs of something different with your hand, you, you don't know the meaning. Because when you trust me, watch this, at this level, it means you are drawing from an account that I own. A trust, ladies and gentlemen, describes a legal arrangement through which assets are held by the trustee, the Lord, exclusively for the beneficiary. That's you. So so for those of you who have, have grasped the revelation, I want you to see that God is taking your treasure. He's tying it to timing. And he is creating this thing called to trust that specifically has economic undertones. So God is not questioning your praise today. He is not questioning your worship today. He's not challenging the spiritual aspect of your relationship with him today. He is actually contending for your money. Because he has an objective that he wants to execute so that he can manifest things that he's already promised you. That's why he's taken your treasure He's connected it to timing, and he's brought you into this thing that is now a legal arrangement where assets are held. Listen to this. Philippians chapter 4, verses 15 through 19. Paul says, and you Philippians yourselves, 
well know that in the early days of the gospel ministry, when I left Macedonia, no church but Limitless entered into partnership with me. You read it from the Amplified Classic Version. It says, no church entered into partnership with me and opened up a debit and credit account in giving and receiving except you only. So Paul, who was a rabbi, understood the Hebrew basis of trust required an account so that the more you prove by your response that you trust God, the more deposits he makes into the account. So that if at any point you find yourself without a job, somebody's coming with me right there. If at any point you find yourself with not the best credit, if at any point you find yourself with something you need but not the deposit to get it, you don't have to wait for man. You can always go back to God. And when you go to God, he pulls up your account to see if there are sufficient funds. And God realizes that you have released treasure you have allowed him to connect it to time and he says don't worry about the 500 credit score baby don't worry about the car that's acting up that you need to switch out don't be concerned that they're telling you they're selling the house and you have to find another one i've got all that figured out don't be concerned that they're downsizing and laying you off that business idea that you've had for 12 and a half years it's time for me to make that thing pop and i just wish i had somebody in limitless church today who could understand that the whole while you were wondering and wishing and hoping and praying if God was ever going to come through for you, he was building up an account so that in 2023, you can make your necessary withdrawal. Here's what's important to note. Before we go, once the trust is established, a trust account is open. Once the trust is established, a trust account is then open. Now listen to this, because when the trust is formed, the name of the person who owns the trust is always hidden from the public. Let me just walk by eight of y'all to the altar right here. Don't even look at nobody, just say he had to hide me. See, you don't, even, you, don't, you don't understand. God hid you behind bad credit. You're like, wow. All right, Rev, you pushing it today. God hid you behind the financial disruption. Because while it looked like you were underqualified, he knew when he gave you provision, you would be overqualified. So he wanted to make sure that you would not become indebted to people, places, and things based on a season of your life that you were being processed waiting for him to show up. <laughs> Through the power of a trust, the one who owns the trust has anonymity and immunity from any attack. Now here's my final point. Because if God takes your treasure and connects it to his timing to create a trust, that means God has deliberately hidden you. But the good part about hiding you is that you now have full immunity. In other words, as you leave this sanctuary today, can you handle that? You are immune from financial attack. You are immune from poverty. You are immune from lack. So even when the enemy comes in as a flood, there is something inside of you that will lift up a standard. Now, I want you to stand to your feet because you're going to have to give me an exercise in response to what we're about to say. I want you to repeat after me. As of today, as of today I'm, living I'm living my life. As a supernatural sower, I'm taking my treasure, connecting it 
to God's timing and I'm sitting my life in his trust. From this moment forward, everything I do, everywhere I go, everything I have to have is already mine. And no weapon formed against my immunity will be able to prosper. I believe it. I receive it. And it is so in Jesus' name. Amen and give God a praise right now. Jeez. Tag two or three people around you and tell them untraceable favor. Adobo kosha daba. Debeke daba hando doboso. I said two or three. Untraceable favor. Untradobo kosoto. Every entrepreneur, you should be lifting up your voice right now. I'm telling you, something is about to break. It's been a drought. It's, it's been a struggle for all of you that have nonprofit organizations and you've been looking for funding and donors and you've been trying to figure out why you never get a grant. It's because God's already got a grant for you. But right here, right now, we're going to go ahead and do the doggone thing and we're going to break every generational curse, every demonic attack that has been perpetuating in your life. But I need some participation. If you are a supernatural sower, even before you sow your money, you need to start practicing by sowing what's in your mouth. Out of your bellies, I want rivers of water to begin to flow. The devil is a liar. I'm not going to receive this revelation and stay broke. I'm not going to receive this word and still struggle. I just need somebody to take about 30 seconds right now. Lift up your hands. Open up your mouth and begin to bombard heaven. God, I need everything you got for me. If it's a house I didn't build, I receive it. If it's a vineyard I didn't plant, I receive it. If it's an open door on my job, if it's a business contract, if it's an opportunity to experience another quality of life, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. If you know God has called you to be a millionaire, I want you to begin to cry out to him right now. No more one figures, no more two figures, no more three figures, no more four figures, no more five figures, no more six figures. We push you in the realm of the spirit into seven figures and beyond. There's a work that you got to do. There's an assignment that's on your life. Come on, Limitless. Come on. Li oh, God, I'm under both shots out. Woo! Hey, 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 hey. Right where you stand, and I want you to just bow your head and close your eyes. Yes, God, I feel like the, 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 the spirit of depression and this fatigue that has come over some of you because you can't even think straight. You've been going through so much financially. Shoo, good God Almighty. Oh, God. God said, I'm throwing you a lifeline today. I'm throwing you a lifeline today. And this lifeline is going to be used by you to trigger what I put in the trust. This lifeline is called supernatural sowing. This is the foundation. While you're standing there, I want you to think about all the things that you've been experiencing the things that you're facing perhaps some of the people that you're fighting places that you're wrestling with some of you are just thinking about maybe coming to Atlanta was the wrong move maybe I should have just stayed where I was somebody sold you a dream and it just didn't come to pass Oh, my shanda basoto. I hear the Holy Ghost. He's telling me to tell you that you got to let it go right now. You got to let it go. You got to let them go. Because once, once it wounded your heart, you clutched your hands. And you tied me up. 
from performing for you on this earthly level. So right where you are, I want you to just release it. I want you to release them, including you. Because he's getting ready to show you a side of him that you've never seen before. I need some crybabies in this room. You better start crying out to God right where you are. I'm, 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 I'm working on walking you through a prayer, but you're going to have to start crying out to God. Because if you sick of it, you better sound like you sick of it. If you're ready for breakthrough, what you're facing and fighting and the things that you've been struggling with. And it's, it's one season after another season. One cycle after another cycle. Today it comes to an abrupt end. God says I'm hitting the timer on your trouble. I'm freeing you up. We break that spirit of poverty. We break the broke mindset. We curse, we cancel the assignment of limited thinking that has convinced you that you cannot be rich. That you cannot have it all. Some of you feel guilty when God blesses you because you put your blessing against someone else's curse. We cancel and curse it today in the name of Jesus. I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord, today I yield my heart and my hands to your will for my life. I'm asking you now to come into the bank account of my heart. Save me. Heal me. Deliver me. And bless me indeed. I believe that you have prepared me and positioned me to be a supernatural sower and I'm ready to receive supernatural results. It is done. It is so. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you receive that, ladies and gentlemen? I say, do you receive that? I say, do you receive? How many supernatural sowers I got in the house? Come on, well, you need to move around the room and let someone know you are officially a supernatural sower. Come on, tell them. You are officially a supernatural sower destined to receive supernatural results. For those of you here and even online, if you prayed that prayer and you know personally that prayer wasn't just about your money, but that prayer was about the bank account of your heart, we want to make sure that we stay connected to you. So after service, there's going to be some ministers on the side of the altar that you need, you, you need to connect to so that we can assure that whatever happened today in your heart and what continues to happen in your hands will maintain the integrity of what God has began for you. For those of you that are online, if you prayed that prayer and it wasn't just a hand prayer, it was a heart prayer, we want you to put a one in the comments so that we can get connected to you and celebrate you for the decision that you made. Did you all enjoy that word today? Did y'all learn something? Y'all ready for this ride for the month? It's going to be amazing.